So today I'm going to talk to you about a, a clinical problem that will face one in five of you at least once in your lives. And that problem is chronic pain. Uh, chronic pain is a significant worldwide health burden. Uh, currently the estimates are that there are one and a half billion people worldwide with chronic pain. In Australia there's uh, over three million people with chronic pain uh, from estimates last year. And this is expected to go up to five million within a few years with our ageing population. Chronic pain is actually the fourth most prevalent health condition uh, within Australia. So it's really a, a silent uh, problem within the health community. It uh, experiences a large amount of health burden on our society with estimates of around $37 billion per annum uh, estimated by Access Economics last year. And this equates to nearly $11,000 per person uh, within the Australian society. The problem is that the current treatments leave three out of four people uh, with inadequate pain relief. And one person out of those four people gets around 50% reduction in their current pain treatment. So this really is inadequate for those 75% uh, uh, of people uh, with, who are still experiencing chronic pain. The other issue is that it's only, the current medications are only providing a symptomatic relief to the chronic pain uh, epidemic. Uh, this is because if you miss a dose, uh, you forget to take it with your breakfast in the morning, that chronic pain revisits you on a daily basis. And so this means it's really a long-term treatment option that is only available at the moment. This we believe is because the chronic pain is only treating the wiring part of the problem. That is the neuronal system of the brain and spinal cord. Recent developments in the past uh, decade have made us understand that perhaps this isn't the whole story of chronic pain and that there are other immune cell types within the CNS, within our central nervous system, that play a critical role in uh, the creation and maintenance of chronic pain. And these cells are called glia. Now these are amazing little critters. Um, they make up about 90% of the cells within our brain and spinal cord. Originally we thought they were just there holding the wiring in place and keeping everything happy and normal. But we now understand that they are critically involved in disease and in health and they appear to be playing a critical role in chronic pain. So in chronic pain, what we end up with is a pain signal being sent from a normal damaged limb um, or, or area of region on our body. After a long period of time, this video will start to work. Um, and we end up with immune reactivity occurring within our spinal cords. This spinal cord immune reactivity results in a very a specific form of inflammation. And these immune cells become chronically activated beyond the lifespan of the injury in, in our periphery. What we hope to do, and this video would have showed us, is that we're aiming to develop a drug that will be orally available. We'll be able to take it once or twice daily to calm down these immune cells within the spinal cord and potentially actually cure chronic pain rather than just simply treat the problem. And if I could have the next slide, please. Thank you. So the solution is that we believe we've now identified the potential mechanism via which these cells are actually becoming reactive in chronic pain conditions. And the way we've been able to do this is we've discovered a specific role for a very well-known receptor, that being toll-like receptor 4. Um, it actually just won the, or the researchers just won uh, the Nobel Prize uh, for their research and discovery of um, TLR4 this year. What we now understand is that TLR4 within the central nervous system is critical for activating these immune cells in chronic pain, as these cells, this receptor, seems to be able to be able to uh, see the presence of chronic pain. Since uh, I'm here today, clearly we have something that uh, we think is holding great promise, and we've actually been uh, quite a long way along uh, developing small molecules to target this receptor. Um, we actually now have a wealth of preclinical data demonstrating efficacy in the industry standard models, which I'll show you a little bit of data in a moment, showing that our drugs are able to reverse chronic pain. We have all of this protected by PCT filings, and at some points these are uh, at international stages. Our goal is to get our drugs into the um, clinic and to see whether this can actually be a cure for chronic pain, and hence the presentation today. So just as an example of how our um, agents are acting compared to industry leaders, um, here we have a preclinical model of um, uh, rodent pain that's one of the industry standards. At baseline, the animals are responding at normal levels of pain. Um, and after we do our injury, we cause the, uh, a significant amount of pain which uh, lasts for a very long time. Uh, and in our control animals, we really don't see any treatment response in these animals. 
The market leader, and remember this is the drug that causes relief in one out of every four um, people, we see a partial reversal of the pain state in these um, uh, animal models after repeated administrations. However, our drug is resulting in a near complete reversal of this um, chronic pain state. And if we look at the spinal cord pathology in these animals, their spinal cords are in fact returning to background levels of immune reactivity. So we believe we're actually treating the pathology around the, uh, and curing these animals of, of their chronic pain. One of the exciting things that's happened in the last 12 months, and again a reason for presenting today, is that the package has been significantly de-risked because we've been selected by the National Institute on Drug Addiction um, for our um, lead agent to be uh, their candidate molecule to go from in their bench to bedside program actually for the treatment of addiction and not pain, but um, we're very excited because this means that they're doing all of the hard work and all of the investment in the pre-investigational drug um, uh, process with the toxicology uh, and uh, all the scale up that's required for pre-IND filing. This means that a significant amount of money has already been invested into this package and we've been guaranteed access to this information to support our IND filing in the pain domain. What the opportunity also presents with um, the IND package will be filed uh, late next year. We have the opportunity to pre-pain um, IND filing to actually create um, some uh, game-changing data, clinical data, to support this package to move forward. One of the problems is we're proposing to target a new cell type and a new receptor within the central nervous system. Uh, and so there's quite a significant cultural change required in the pain um, uh, uh, drug industry area. So what we have uh, identified is a possibility of also conducting a pre-IND clinical trial with an existing agent which has uh, uh, unfortunate um, side effects that uh, uh, used for another indication so it would be uh, less efficacious and less uh, for, um, useful uh, at the clinical uh, endpoint but would still, still serve as a possibility of, of testing our agent uh, before we get to IND um, uh, investment levels. So here we just have a flow diagram of what's happening at the moment. We're developing, um, moving forward with uh, NIDA in developing our preclinical addiction package so that they can then do all their work in IND filing to take it to their phase one trial in addiction. We are able to use this IND information from NIDA to support our license, our uh, IND filing in our pain indication, with the timeline also possibly allowing us to do a pre-IND clinical trial of proof of concept. And clearly, as you, some of you may be aware, toll-like receptor 4 is probably one of the hop hottest topics in uh, central nervous system disease and pathology at the moment. And we believe we're probably one of the only uh, groups that have a blood-brain barrier permeable uh, drug which will be able to access TLR4 within the central nervous system. All the other TLR4 drugs are peripherally acting. So where, where we are in terms of the timeline of this, we, we will be, uh, NIDA will be filing their IND package for addiction late in 2012. We're clearly continuing our research and developing additional preclinical data in our other indications and pursuing the PCT filings of these. We've also got several other classes of our, beyond our lead compound that are new chemical entities uh, where we will have composition of matter um, covered. Uh, as well, so that we will have um, the next generation compounds uh, within our, our grasp as well. So the uh, proof of concept study could be conducted in 2012 uh, with clearly a need for commercial partners to support this. And then there's also the opportunity to move through to phase one and phase two trials in 2013. Our hope is to take these agents to clinic to provide a potential cure uh, for the chronic pain epidemic that we are currently facing. Thank you.